Well, we watched AEW Dynamite Title Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. Christian Cage opens the show in the truck, dubs it the biggest dynamite ever. Serious implications for his title tonight. Swerve Strickland versus Brian Danielson, the winner gets a title shot at him on a collision. He notes Swerve cost his team the match at Wembley Stadium against Sting and Darby, losing that to Coffin match. And a little birdie told him that Brian Danielson still consider, considers himself the best in the world. He'll be proud, uh, happy to be the one on Collision. And the main event tonight, Luchasaurus will end Adam Copeland's run. And uh, I may elaborate on the three words I left you with last week. Also, as face of the company, he has procured the first 30 minutes commercial free. Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland. What an awesome wrestling match this was. Can they wrestle every week? I, I, I've, I mean, we, we'll, we'll talk about the finish and what we we talked well, that's about. That's the problem. I don't want him going wrestling in. every week if Swerve's just going to be out there losing every week. Yeah, yeah. They had a great match, a pay per view worthy match. It was just awesome. Uh, Swerve gets the house call in the stomp for two. Danielson kicks out of that. I, I should point out actually, uh, uh, Swerve had been working the ribs, and Danielson was doing the bit where he runs into the corner and bounces out and has the corner kick. He did it too many times. He hit the corner to bounce out and didn't bounce. Ribs gave out. And, After uh, all these years, that finally paid off. Yes. I hate that spot in the corner. Everybody that does that spot, I'm just like, then you're not allowed to take a buckle because, you know, they take a buckle and they sell it. But when they run full steam into the buckle to bounce off the buckle, somehow that doesn't hurt. Well, finally, after all these years, this guy goes for one, but he went for the second one and he hurt himself Yes, because he took a buckle. So Swerve followed with the house call and the stomp for two. He was desperate at this point, so he tries to use pinch on his crown, but Hangman steals it. And Swerve avoids one knee strike, kicks out of a cradle, finally eats a knee strike, and he is pinned. The match was tremendous. A great pay-per-view worthy match. But A, and this is partly in hindsight, but we all thought they were not going to win the war, uh, or win the battle, I guess I should say. But uh, it's on the show that got fewer viewers than most Dynamites. And most importantly, Swerve should not be losing right now. Thank you. I mean, it's not it, its not that he's buried. It's not the end of the world. It's not like he can't come back from it. But he was so hot coming off that Seattle win. He was ready to be top guy right now. And he loses here to go on to feud with Heyman, obviously. And uh, shortly, we'll spoil this, he's jumped in line by Powerhouse Hobbs. Samoa Joe is also floating around. And uh, Swerve should be higher, closer to the top of the heel totem pole than he is. So here's the thing. Do I think that this is going to drastically derail Swerve's career? Of course not, okay? But the thing is that fans are... Maybe savvy is not the right word, but fans have been conditioned a certain way over the last decade or so. And the fact of the matter is, there was a match at the last pay-per-view, and it was the Ricky Starks match. It was Ricky Starks. Who do you wrestle? Who was Ricky Starks wrestling on the pay-per-view just a couple of days ago? Wheeler Yuta. Wheeler Yuta. Yeah. It was Ricky Starks and Wheeler Yuta. And granted, they weren't in the best place on the show. You know, it was it was a it was a rough spot to be in. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, the match had no heat early. I mean, am I wrong? It was like the match did not have any heat. It had so little heat that I was uh, getting food and going to the bathroom. Okay. So, yeah. Now, why would a Ricky Starks match have no heat when he beat CM Punk and Brian Danielson over the course of the last few months? Well, the answer is because he also just lost to them. He beat CM Punk, and then he lost to CM Punk. And he beat Brian Danielson, and then he lost to Brian Danielson. And the fact of the matter is, fans see a guy trading wins with stars. Like, you beat a star, and then the star beats you. And they they don't see you as being elevated. They see you as being elevated when you start winning and not losing anymore at all. And, you know, Swerve got the biggest win of his career in an awesome match with the Hangman at the pay-per-view. And no... You know, every time I argue this, people go, oh, so Brian has a problem with anybody losing. I didn't say that. I said a problem with Swerve losing. Yeah, obviously there are plenty of people that can lose. There's like 200 people on the roster. But Swerve doesn't need to be losing right after getting that huge win over Hangman. I don't care what angle you did or what you did with Hangman or whatever. There's another guy that could have been in there. And it would have been an awesome match because it's with Brian Danielson. And he has nothing except awesome matches. So that's my, my argument to him. 
you know, not losing this match. But the match was great. I mean, it was the best match on the show, I think. So I look over the rest of there the show There were some very good wrestling matches on the show. I, I but think this is probably was, the best one. This was clearly, to me, the best match on the show. Right. And uh, I enjoyed it immensely. But I didn't like seeing the guy lose. But what can you do? What's done is done. Samoa Joe promo, video package. He notes... This, this week, he remembered he was Ring of Honor TV champion. It kind of comes and goes, whether he remembers or not. He begins his ascension towards greatness on collision. And there you go. Chris Jericho versus Powerhouse Hobbs. So for about uh, 20 seconds, they're just wailing on each other. And then Hobbs is a big-ass spine buster. He's near fell off that. And he spine busts him and spine busts him and spine busts him. And Jericho's fighting for his life. And somewhere in here, he gets a code breaker out of nowhere for two. Later on, he actually got a, like a super deep Boston Crab. You don't think a guy like Powerhouse Hobbs could bend like this, but he did. They powered out, and he slammed him. And the announcers lost track of all the spine busters and the slams. And finally, Hobbs is a series of world's strongest slams. Stands there for a bit. Eventually, puts a knee on Jericho's face and gets the pin. A massacre. A complete massacre massacre for powerhouse Hobbs over Chris Jericho. Yes. I thought this match was fabulous. I thought this match this is this is literally exactly what we were just talking about a second ago. Powerhouse Hobbs was a guy who win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss. And he was never all that over because he would win and then he would lose. And he gets chosen to be in the Don Callis family, okay? Well, now you need to make this guy a fucking unstoppable monster. And the way you do that is, A, he's not in there doing jobs, and B, he needs to fucking destroy somebody who is a big name. And he destroyed Chris Jericho. Absolutely destroyed this guy. And the business needs more people like Chris Jericho. Because we have talked about this for three decades now. The idea of putting somebody over. And how most people who claim to put people over don't actually put people over. They fake put people over. This was not fake putting over Hobbs. He went in there. There was, there was no outside interference. He just fucking destroyed this guy. Jericho made a comeback. Jericho gave it his all. They didn't tell the story that Jericho was hurt going in or somebody attacked him beforehand or somebody cheated or whatever. Powerhouse Hobbs was the better man and he massacred an all-time legend and pinned him with his knee on his fucking face. So I hope that Hobbs has already bought a very nice Christmas gift for Chris Jericho. Whatever his favorite bottle and is. However you do that on Amazon where you set up a recurring gift or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like every December 25th, you should send him something special. Because Jericho did not need to do this. And he did. And I don't know that he offered to do it. But it's Don Cal's family, dude. My guess is he probably did. And uh, it was everything that Powerhouse needed. It's what I've wanted to see them do with Hobbs for like a year now. And now here he is in a main event group. They made him a fucking killer. He, you can't not put him on TV because he's part of one of the top heel groups every week now. I thought this was awesome. Absolutely great. Now, my only question, it's not really a complaint, but it, it, it's the waters are murky now because Jay White's not going to get his title shot for another five weeks. Have I had that right? Maybe six. I'm not quite sure, but it's a while. So now you've got Joe in line for a title shot. You've got... Hobbs, then going over like this for a reason at some point. Uh, Wardlow is I still floating around. I don't think he was going over. I don't think he was going over to set up a title shot. This was just to give him an enormous amount of credibility as the killer in the Don Callis family, hmm. and they can keep these guys all feuding and doing whatever. But uh, and Wardlow is going to be squashing people for probably six, eight months, just doing the same thing again. The only one is Joe. And, hey, Joe might win that. Uh, they've got the dy Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal. Mm -hmm. Winner faces MJF. You could do that. But I don't think that uh, that's imminent either. I think it's just going to be MJF and Jay White for the foreseeable future. Earlier today, at Roderick Strong's humble abode, Adam Cole has now delayed his surgery, his much-needed surgery, for an entire week to be at Roderick Strong's beck and call, whatever duties he needs around the house. This week, he's cutting the grass on the scooter, pushing a lawnmower. 
sweating in the Florida sun. Finishes up, says he needs a clean shirt. They say, don't worry, we got one for you in the house. It is, of course, a Roderick Strong, neck strong t-shirt. And uh, they're hanging out on the couch, and Adam asks what's up with the giraffe. And Taven explains it's uh, their get-well present to Roddy. Cole never got him a get-well present, but this is their present. It's Rick Strong, the giraffe. The giraffe is the most neck strongest animal in the kingdom, they say. Cole says, look, I've been here for a week now. You got no internet. You got no cell service. You got no TV. Roderick Strong, wrestling for a televised wrestling promotion, screams, TV is the devil! Cole says, whatever, I gotta get my surgery. And Roderick says, Adam! I need one more thing. Wacky. It was all very, very wacky. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.